Good morning, friends, and welcome to the pre-market session. Friends, uh, we had a very dramatic recovery in the U.S. markets in the last about one hour or so. Uh, U.S. markets opened uh, with a downward uh, gap of almost about 100 points, and they went down to almost 175 points. And when the day closed, they were down only about uh, 25 odd points. Uh, there were key economic data points. Uh, first was the uh, quarter one GDP uh, number, which was at 1.6%, uh, pretty much in line with expectations. Also, the weekly jobless data were there, and they were also in line with expectations. But the overall uh, data which is coming is not very resilient or strong, which is a bit of a concern. Also, uh, European markets were down about uh, 0.5 to 1%. Uh, friends, the EU summit is underway. Uh, there are not uh, many expectations uh, so we don't think there is a case for a wild swing in the market because most of the markets are pretty uh, okay and uh, even the volumes there are pretty down so uh, no real major action is expected because of the eu summit as such uh, when we look at the asian markets today in the morning uh, there are mixed bags some of the markets are up about 0.25 to 0.5 percent some of them are down so no real major uh, uh, to look forward to as far as Asian markets are concerned. Uh, friends, back home we had uh, expiry yesterday and surprisingly it was uh, pretty dull in the sense that the range of the Nifty was about 30 odd points. So which is quite uh, surprising to see uh, on an expiry day. Also there were important announcements uh, from the government on uh, you know certain steps that they want to take uh, to restore the confidence of the foreign institutional investors. We'll talk about all that a little later. First of all, uh, let's do a FNO check with Nandesh. Hi, Nandesh. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, no major action on the expiry day, which is a little uh, surprising. Uh, but what have you made of the overall rollovers? See, after a very long time, we have seen the last last year uh, expiry. You know, on an average, as you were telling, that only 30, 35 points range were there. But on a rollover note, we have seen a very good rollovers taking place. You no, know, last month we have seen around 58 percent rollovers, and this time we have seen around 68.5 percent rollovers in taking place. Now the rollover caused the difference between the current month and the next month, which started around you know, 27 points for this week, uh, the last week. You know, it settled around 6.6 points. It's clearly indicating a fresh low rollovers has been taking place for the next sales. Okay, and do we have any broad range uh, um, that we can talk about for the next month? See, 5,000 and 5,100 put options stands around you no know, 95 lakh shares in open interest. You know, on a, on a higher side, you no know, 5,300 and 5,400 call option is seen in addition. So, you no, know, what I feel that overall bias for the market is positive. You know, unless and until we are holding these levels, 5,000 on a short term is a very good support. And if you take a broader view from me, yeah, you no, know, 4,800 is a very good support. So, you no, know, whenever we we'll feel the selling pressure, you know, coming in, you no, know, 5,000, 5,100, 4,950 will act as a very good support in the short term. So, one can, you no. Know, try and accumulate uh, some long positions around those levels if we can find a gap now and one can play out for a higher target of 5400 for July series. Okay, and any other uh, strategy or ideas that you can share with us? See, for, we have not uh, identified any stocks for the intraday. Now, what we feel that you now Tata Motors has been consolidating the range now. Tata Motors on the put side, we have seen some writing in the uh, 230 put options. And on the higher side, you now 250 call option has seen a very good addition. So now what I feel that you now Tata Motors has a positive bias. You no know, stock is trading somewhere around uh, 235, 238 levels. So now one can accumulate this stock. Uh, from expiry point of view, I'm targeting 250 levels on a higher side. Apart from that, for a short term, even Tata Steel is looking good. 400 and put 400 put option has seen a very good writing. So, no, uh, 412 was approx closing on the future side for the July series. So one can accumulate this stock around uh, 405, 408 uh, and with a stop loss of 400 on the closing basis. Also Nandish, we have seen that the IVs have actually cooled off quite a bit and uh, because June was a very uh, event heavy month, a lot of uh, puts were bought into uh, and uh, market really closed higher so most of the puts have expired worthless. But July, if one wants to play for the volatility given the low IVs, is there anything that you can suggest? See, generally we have seen that you know, whenever the IV cool off significantly, so uh, you know, at least uh, for a week's time, you no know, market will remain in the range. So I'm not expecting a major breakout at least for a you know, you know, you know very short time. But uh, you no, know, after that one can uh, one can form a straddle or strangle any of the strategy. But I'm not suggesting to form any of the strategies in the current week. You no, know, one can wait for some days and when market gives a clear direction, one can form the strategy. Right, Nandish, thanks a lot for that update. Friends, in terms of news. Uh, after the market uh, closed uh, yesterday, there were certain important announcements coming out from the finance uh, ministry, particularly with respect to the draft uh, GAAR guidelines. 
and there are two three things that we have to keep in mind first is that uh, you know uh, they may really say that uh, the uh, gar may not be implemented with retrospective effect remember when last time around it was introduced uh, people had this as an apprehension so if there is a categoric clarification that it would not be implemented with retrospective effect it could have a uh, positive implications for our market also uh, there are talks that there is going to be some kind of a monetary threshold on the gar implication so that is something that we will be watching out for also a couple of other measures might be announced to restore the confidence so we'll have to wait and see what really comes out of uh, the finance uh, ministry uh, before we really take a plunge onto the uh, view uh, also friends there are reports that the petrol price have, has been cut by almost 3 rupees per liter and uh, because we've seen the crude price really falling off uh, so this could have some kind of a negative implication for some of the oil marketing companies in the initial trade but we don't think that there's a case for a substantial uh, you know uh, downside to that also there is going to be an important block deal today wherein Kane UK is going to sell about 3.5 percent stake in Kane India the price range uh, that people are talking about is 307 to 315 so this could give a good trading opportunity for people who just want to play for a small pop you can put in a buy bid somewhere in the range of about uh, 307 to 312 and immediately about 5 to 10 rupees upside you can just exit out of it so that's an important trading opportunity uh, also friends there are reports that uh, there is going to be some kind of a penalty on the telecom companies for understating their revenues so companies like Bharti Idea and Arcom could have a negative opening on the back of these reports so uh, that's it uh, from all of us friends on the news front have a great weekend and see you on monday morning